What's happening, everybody? This is a roundabout. This is a vessel that can be enjoyed by one or two people. And it's got a six foot beam and it's really stable and a lot of fun. And it's made out of plastic. This is a five gallon bucket. This also is made out of plastic. If you look on the bottom, it says HDPE. There's a little triangle there, right? That means that this bucket is made out of high density polyethylene. That's the same thing that this is made out of. Now this particular roundabout was damaged by shipping companies. It can't be sold anymore. So what we're gonna do is salvage some of the plastic from this boat before we cut it up and we scrap it. That to me says opportunity. This is one of four cup holders that's on the roundabout. And then you see there are basins here for storage. Of course the hatches are missing and some of the other things this is uh, <laughs> part of where it was damaged by the shipping companies. Anyways, um, yeah, the cleats and all that stuff will be salvaged from this boat before it's torn up, as well as some of the, just the, the plain old polyethylene. These cup holders are what I really want to salvage today. So to cut them up, there's lots of different ways, but today I'm going to use a Dremel tool. Okay, the reason I wanted the cup holder out of the roundabout is because I want to repair this hole in my Bass Raider. You can see down here there's another cup holder that I had added in the past and I wasn't really concerned too much about how it looked. So I just slathered on some 5200 around the perimeter, dropped this stainless steel cup in place, and it worked for a long time. But the problem with polyethylene plastic is that practically nothing sticks to it. This one here kind of came free. You can see where the old 5200 was, and it just lifted free like it wasn't even there. So I cut another small piece of the roundabout. Yeah, that's... Um, a small piece that I've already welded in there and now I'm going to take this piece here and I'm going to heat this part here till it looks wet and I'll do the same thing to the inside perimeter here uh, of the lip of the cup holder and I'll smush the two of them together and then I'll smash the perimeter down with like a uh, screwdriver once everything is nice and hot. I'll be using a regular little torch. You can get these fairly inexpensively at like Home Depot or something and a regular big flat head screwdriver. So let's make this happen right now. Okay, well, still kind of mushy, <laughs> and uh, the plastic of the boat discolored a little bit, but once that cools, there's going to be a bond between the two plastics, since they're the same. No water will be able to get in there anymore, and that should never leak again. <laughs> Barring some crazy incident, I'm pretty confident in the way that worked. It's not really any uglier than this, the difference is that one is not going to come apart. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> Everything is so hot, it's, uh, the sun is killing me. But I wanted to show you this. I've done plastic welding in the past. This is not the first time, but I thought it was worth repeating because anybody out there who has a hole on the bottom of their boat or something, 
might not know how to repair it and you can use a five gallon bucket if you don't have a roundabout laying around. <laughs> so plastic welding is kind of easy if you're not interested in making things look really, really pretty. Again, I just wanted to show you guys some plastic welding that I did and hopefully it encourages people who are somewhat inclined uh, to tinker to go out and try it because once you know how to weld plastic, it opens up a whole new world of cool things that you can do with kayaks. See you next time. Thanks for watching.